Hey guys, it's Miss Kelly, and I'm reading outside to you today because it's a gorgeous day. We're going to read Make Way for Ducklings by Robert McCloskey. Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were looking for a place to live, but every time they saw what looked like a good place, Mrs. Mallard said it was no good. There were sure to be foxes and turtles, and that was no place to raise baby ducklings. So they flew on and on. When they got to Boston, they felt too tired to fly any further. There was a nice pond in the public garden which had a little island on it. And they decided to spend the night there. Just as they were getting ready to start on their way, a next day, a strange, enormous bird came by. It was pushing a boat full of people, and there was a man sitting on his back. Good morning, quacked Mr. Mallard, being polite, but the bird was too proud to answer. The people on the boat threw peanuts in the water, so the Mallards followed them all around the pond and got a great breakfast. It's a swan boat. I like this place, said Mrs. Mallard as they climbed out on the bank. Why don't we build a nest and raise our ducklings here? Good, said Mr. Mallard, delighted that at last Mrs. Mallard had found a place that suited her. But just then, look out, squawked Mrs. Mallard all of a dither. You'll get run over. This is no place for babies with all those horrid things rushing about. We'll have to look somewhere else bicycles. So they flew over Beacon Hill and around the sta State House, but there was no place there. Then they looked in Lewisburg Square, but there was no water to swim in. Then they flew on to the Charles River. This is better, quacked Mr. Mallard. That island looks like a nice quiet place, and it's only a little way from the public garden. Yeah, said Mrs. Mallard. This looks like just the right place to hatch the ducklings. So they chose a cozy spot among the bushes near the water and settled down to build their nest, and only just in time, for now they were beginning to molt. And all of their old wing feathers started to drop out, and they would not be able to fly again until the new ones grew in. But of course they could swim, and one day they swam over to the park on the riverbank, and there they met a police man, man named Michael. Michael gave them peanuts. And after that, the Mallards called on Michael every day. After Mrs. Mallard had laid eight eggs in the nest, she couldn't go visit Michael anymore because she had to sit on the eggs to keep them warm. She moved off the nest only to get a drink of water or to have her lunch or to count the eggs and make sure they were all there and safe. One day, the ducklings hatched. First came Jack, then Cack, then Lack and Mac and Knack and Whack and Pack and Quack. Mr. and Mrs. Mallon were bursting with pride. It was a great responsibility to take care of so many ducklings, and it kept them very busy. One day, Mr. Mallon decided he'd like to take a trip to see what the rest of the river was like further on. So he said, I'll meet you in a week, dear, in the public garden. Take good care of the ducklings. Don't you worry, said Mrs. Mallard. I know all about bringing up children. And she did. She taught them how to swim and dive. She taught them to walk in a line, to come when they were called, and to keep a safe distance from bikes and scooters and other things with wheels. <coughs> When at last she felt perfectly satisfied with them, she said, Come along, children, follow me. They swam across the river, waded ashore, and waddled along until they came to the highway. Mr. Mallard, Mrs. Mallard stepped out to cross the road. Honk, honk, went the horns on the cars. Quack, quack, went Mrs. Mallard and the babies. The cars kept speeding by and honking, and Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings kept right on quack, quack, quacking. That made such a noise that Michael came running, waving his arms and blowing his whistle. 
He planted himself in the center of the road, raised one hand and beckoned with the other, so that Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings could cross over to the other side. As soon as Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings were safe, Michael went back to his booth. He called Clancy at headquarters and said, There's a family of ducks walking down the street. Clancy said, Family of what? Ducks, yelled Michael. Send a police car, quick. Meanwhile, Mrs. Mallard had reached the corner bookshop and turned onto Charles Street with Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Knack, Whack, Pack, and Quack all marching in line behind her. Everyone stared. An old lady from Beacon Hill said, Isn't it amazing? And the man who swept the street said, Well, now, ain't that nice? And when Mrs. Mallard heard them, she was so proud. When they came to the corner of Beacon Street, there was the police car with four policemen that Clancy had sent from headquarters. The policemen held back traffic so that Mrs. Mallard and her babies could cross the street. Inside the gate, they all turned around to say thank you to the policeman. The policeman smiled and waved goodbye. When they got to the pond and swam across the little island, there was Mr. Mallard waiting for them, just as he had promised. The ducklings liked the new island so much that they decided to live there. All day long, they followed the swan boats and ate peanuts. And when night falls, they swim to their little island and go to sleep. So I hope you like the story today. If you go to Boston and you go to Boston Public Garden, there is an island there for the ducks. There's actually a statue in the park of Mrs. Mallard and the baby ducklings. And you might even see police officers stopping traffic for other ducks to cross. They're swan boats, and the swan boats are amazing and fun. So I hope you all get to go there someday and that you get to see the ducks and the statues and the swan boat. You take care, and I will talk to you soon. Miss you all so much.